Hello folks, welcome back to Dragon Quest number 11 and we're going to be continuing on today from the Mangle Grove and we're going to be heading towards the good old hometown in order to see what's going on down there. So we've got some inklings that all things may not be well unfortunately. So uh, let's go and see exactly what's happening. We can actually stop at the merchant here if we want to. I don't want to buy anything in all honesty but I just wanted to show that person to you. We were able to repair the bridge or rather the fellow who was a dog but now is a human again was able to repair the bridge for us in the last episode so we can actually make our way through to the Heliodor region quite safely now. Uh, I, you know, spend a little bit of time just making sure that you're prepped for the challenges that lie ahead just so you know where I am guys. I'm currently level 8 about to, well not far off, I'm level 9 with Eric and I am level 9 with Fuzz. So maybe you're a little bit ahead of me, I haven't done all that much grinding to tell you the truth but I have done a little bit but, you know, here and there, nothing all that exciting, as I say. So, uh, hopefully you won't be far off where I am in either direction. Either a little bit ahead of me, or a little bit behind. So, we're going to the uh, Heliodor region. And, hopefully you just saw on the map where we, uh, where I was then. So, you know where to go, but it's pretty obvious anyway. It says, doesn't it? So, after this loading screen, pretty sure we're going to get a cutscene, which I'll be quiet for. And then we'll carry on after. Oh, no, no cutscene. Wow. Okay, <laughs> let's keep moving then. So we're going to Cobblestone, which is down south. So it makes sense, I guess, that we try and get there first. I'm just going to ignore the enemies here, since uh, they're pretty pointless anyway. We kind of out-leveled them now. And we do want to crack ahead with the story at this point, I think. Make sure I'm going the right way. Yes, cobblestone. Just down here. Wow. Feels like a while since we last visited this place. I mean, it has been about six hours, so... <laughs> of game time, that is. Right, now maybe there's going to be a cutscene. Oh, yes. You can tell by the music change. Well, how strange. Everything looks tickety-boo, doesn't it? Looks like there's nothing wrong. Maybe we should start just chatting to people. Not a lot goes on here. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, whoever this guy is, he doesn't seem to recognise us. So we can, if we want, have a look around some of the buildings. Uh, there are a few breakables. There's no actual items that I know of, but there is some gold coins and that that we can get if we want to. So let's have a look at the ladder, shall we? Anything to smash? Nope. Ultimately, we need to find Amber. Ah, a couple of smashes here. Well, we can walk into those. I've never actually found any items in those kinds of barrels that you just walk into and break. It is worth checking these bookcases as well, guys, because you can find recipes and that in them. Especially now that we are, you know, fully-fledged crafters. Well, this is unusual. The king sent what looked like an army to this place. Only everything seems to be in good working order. Yep, so we've got some instruction there to go and speak to Amber, who's over 
uh, this side, actually, on the east. So if I just bring up the map here. I'm not going to venture around too much at the moment. But by all means, have a look in all these buildings. In fact, I'm going to do that, but I'll do it off uh, the recording. Right, so I've went round uh, inside a few of the buildings, and I think I've got a total of about six gold coins. So not really a whole lot, if we're honest. Uh, but let's just have a look where I am at the moment on the map. So you can see this building I'm outside of that I'm facing towards on the map. If you want to make your way over there, then come behind the back of it. We can actually jump up some of these boxes here for a little platforming section. And that's going to uh, bring us to this sparkly up here. Containing a piece of pine. And we can see there's another sparkly on the roof opposite. So we're going to drop down here. And I haven't actually tried to get this one myself yet. I'm assuming it's going to be this bit of platforming uh, just here, though. Yep. There we go. And another lovely sparklies for us. For a flowy feather. And while we're up here, is there any more sparklies I can see? Yes! Right over there in the distance. So, <laughs> there's a lot of roof jumping in this game, isn't there? So many roofs with items for us. Now, question. How do we get onto this roof? Maybe we can just leap on from here. Can't see anything. That didn't work. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's best, I find, not to do actually, uh, you know, sprint jump. You don't seem to be able to jump in time. At least I can't when I do it. Rather, you're just better off running normally and then jumping. At least that's the way I discovered is the, you know, the right way of doing it when we was in uh, Heliodor and jumping on various roofs and stuff. But I can't seem to get on this one. So let's try one more, and then if not, I'll have another look around. Okay, I will try a sprint jump. No, I don't want to go that way. Oh, man. Okay, one more, one more. Then I might just have to give up for now. Okay, let's try and face that angle there. Go! No! Hmm, okay, there's platforms here. <sighs> that jump just looks so inviting. I reckon you can do it, you know. I reckon you can jump. Where we was trying to jump off that cliff there and make it onto the roof. But uh, either way, I'm just going to use the platforms here. And all that for medicinal herb. But hey, it's important. You know, might need it one day. <laughs> right then, okay, let's head over to the east and to home. So across the bridge we go. And up the hill we go. And through the door we go. Is that you, dear? I'm cooking your favourite stew. It'll be ready any minute now. You'll be desperate to stuff your face as always, I'm sure. Well, set the table and I'll just give it a last little stir. doing in my house what nonsense are you talking my boy is six years old who do you think you are waltzing in here and claiming to be someone you're not whoever you are I want you out of my house this instant don't make me say it twice Wow, so something is amiss, for sure. What is going on? Hmm, -mm, interesting stuff. And uh, who's this young girl, I wonder? Well, let's go and find out, shall we? It couldn't be somebody we've met before who was a little bit older, could it? Either way, it looks like we've got a job on our hands. Thank you, mister. My name's Gemma. Who are you? But that can't be right. Oh, wait, I get it. That's not your name. You mean you're looking 
looking for him, right? He went to look for Chalky. Come on, follow me. <laughs> How strange then, it seems like we've time travelled or something. Everyone is uh, quite a bit younger than they were when we last saw them. And apparently, even Fuzz here is present in the village. Albeit a little bit younger, no doubt. Since Amber said he's only six years old. Or should only be six years old. So we're going to follow Gemma, mini Gemma. See where she takes us. And while she's leading the way, I'm going to go and break another pot. 11 gold coins. I'm such a destructive force. I just demolish every town I go into. No pot is safe. Well, can't be much further. We're coming to the end of the map here. Ha ha ha, there's a little one on the pier here. Hey Grandad, can I borrow your ladder? The wind blew Gemma's scarf off and now it's stuck up a tree. <laughs> well, we can't be having that now, can we? Let me go and find it for you. Anymore. That nice man over there got my headscarf down for me. He said he was looking for you. Is he a friend of yours? Nope. I've never even seen him before. I think it might be me he's looking for, you know. Why don't you two run along and play and leave us grown-ups to talk? All right. <laughs> well, well, well. It's you, isn't it? <laughs> I knew it. I'd known you since you were a baby, after all. I knew it was you right away. But you don't look too happy, my dad. Care to tell you, old granddad, what's on your mind? So, you're from a future where I'm no longer around. Well, well. And King Carnelian went and threw you in the dungeon. And to think I trusted that he'd do right by you. If I'd known how things were going to turn out, I would have told you everything. Instead of hiding the truth from you for all those years. But you don't have time to be listening to an old man's regrets. Here's what we're going to do. If you head east out of the village, you'll come to Cobblestone Falls, as you know. Go there and dig in front of the three-sided rock. Got that? Hmm? The three-sided rock at Cobblestone Falls. You'll know the one I mean. figure of a man you've become. I'm so glad I got to see you all grown up. You'll be good now, lad. Don't waste your time bearing grudges. Live life with love in your heart. You always saw me, right? Bye now. Okay, so it looks like we haven't actually time travelled then, does it? Fuzzy's grandfather, whom we know uh, wasn't alive, was present again, of course, because we were looking into the past. And maybe it's Fuzzy's ability here, as the luminary, or something else is going on. But it seems that he was just an illusion anyway. So we're going to head back towards the uh, central of the village here. Or the central part of the village. And we'll see what's going on with the rest of the townsfolk.
thanks for getting Gemma's headscarf back for her. Come back and play any time you like. <laughs> You okay? I lost you for a minute there. Not surprising, I guess. I can't believe they do this. And just because you grew up here? What kind of animals are they? Jasper and his goons must have ridden straight here after you got thrown in the dungeons and torched the place. Hey, just now, when you zoned out, the mark on your hand was glowing, and so was the root wrapped around that tree. Was it another one of those visions? Wow. So you... you went back in time and spoke with your granddad and... And yourself? That is seriously weird. Must have been the root here. It must have the power to show you the past. Well, if what your granddad told you was right, then we need to head over to Cobblestone Falls. Where did you say it was? East of the village? Listen, I know this can't be easy, but hanging around here isn't going to do anybody any good. Come on. Right, so everything's a little bit somber now. We can see the true reality of the village here, and I don't know, something kind of uh, somber about it all, isn't there? So, we've just had a vision of the past, obviously, and we saw uh, Fuzzy's grandfather. And interestingly, he was always saying, wasn't he, we were told at the start, about how the hero here is, in fact, a luminary, and nobody really understood why he would say that. But indeed, uh, it seems that the grandfather actually had, from his perspective, I would assume, a vision of a growing up Fuzz uh, back in the past. So, hopefully all that makes sense. But all the little pieces are coming together now, aren't they? So we're going to head into the church here. Mainly because I believe there's an item we can grab. Uh, in one of these rooms or something. So let's just check these out. It might be this one. Or it might be the other, the other room. Oh, not in here. Let's try this one, shall we? Ah, there we go. Okay, a recipe book. By the way, you can also rest up as well uh, in the hero's house. If you're low on health or MP or whatever the case may be. And we can chat to this guy as well. I believe we can save at him. Yes, so we can do all of the save stuff with this fellow here. So you want to just head back out of the village into the Heliodor region. Okay, head out of Cobblestone back to here. Uh, we can use the bell to summon our horse, although it's not really that required because we're just taking the exit to the southeast. If you look on the map, you can see we're heading towards the Emerald Coast, uh, but there's two exits to the Emerald Coast. Uh, we only need to take the one that's closest to us. It doesn't matter, we could take the other one. And we'll just have a little bit more of a journey on us, but really not that much more. But let's just take the closest one, since it's actually close to our destination in the Emerald Coast as well. Before we actually exit, though, there's a treasure chest over here I'm going to recommend that we grab. 
and it's five perfectionist pearls inside. And then we're going to head down into here. If Horsey would actually do what I'm telling him to do. Actually, I think he was. I think it was just I wasn't telling him to do the right thing. Right, and the very next quest objective is actually really close to where we are. So before we do anything else, uh, we're actually going to do that. We're looking for the three-faced rock or something, aren't we? And saying that, there's a sparkly over here. Maybe we could grab that. Come on. A fresh jug of water. Strange place to leave a jug of water. Can we get up there? Uh, apparently not. Oh, there we go. Look. I'm going to dismount at this point then. And if we just head over here, you can see my position exactly on the map, of course. This looks remar remarkably like a uh, three-faced rock, kind of pyramid-shaped. And of course, it's got the quest objective, which is also a bit of a hint that we're at the right location. So let's go ahead and activate that. Letters, huh? The top one there has seen better days, that's for sure. My dearest, darling baby boy. When finally you come to read this, I will almost certainly be long dead. You see, not long after you were born, our beloved kingdom of Dundrazil was attacked by an army of monsters. I was forced to flee with you in my arms and expended the last of my strength in ensuring that you escaped to safety. If you are fortunate enough to have been found by some kindly soul, you must seek out the king of Heliodor when you come of age. Our kingdom and his have long enjoyed close relations, and your father and I would trust him with our lives. Never forget, my son. You are a prince of the kingdom of Dundrazil. But more than that, you are the luminary. Yours is a weighty burden indeed. It is you who must stand against the darkness and banish it from our world. It breaks my heart to leave you, my darling. But it is the only way. I only hope that one day, you will learn to forgive me. It's from someone important to you, right? Your mother or something? Don't worry, you can tell me about it later. What about the other one? To my dearest grandson. I haven't the foggiest how you manage this, but I met your future self today. As promised, I've buried some things here that will help you on your way. Have you read your mother's letter yet? It was in your basket with you when I first found you. It was because of that letter that I asked my Amber to send you to see the king when the time came. I only wish I'd known how things would turn out. I don't know why Dundrasil was attacked, or why King Carnelian thinks so badly of you. I'm just an ignorant old man from a little village in the country. But I do know that the answers are out there somewhere. The keystone in this box will open the door of departure off to the east. You must go out into the world and seek the truth. Remember now, don't waste your time bearing grudges and live life with love in your heart. All the best, now and forever. Grandad. So we use the keystone to open the door of departure and head out into the world, huh? Well, sounds easy enough. You better believe I'm coming with you. 
You said it was just east of here, right? Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, I know what we're waiting for. I've got some unfinished business to attend to. The orb. The King's Barrow's not too far from here. And just down the way, in fact. Let's go claim what's rightfully mine. Okay, so we've got some uh, new story information there. And we've actually got a couple of destinations now that we need to go to as far as the story is concerned. The King's Barrow, uh, which is for Eric's Orb. And then the Door of Departure, which the device, the amulet thing we just got is, or the gem, whatever it was, is now uh, going to be used as a key for. But first of all, the King's Barrow is going to be our primary destination, so we need to do that before anything else. And as you can see, there's a nice campsite up ahead as well. Uh, but before we go ahead and, you know, complete story stuff, we may as well go on with collecting all the treasures in this area. So what I'm going to recommend, first of all, is that you kill all the new monsters at least once around here, so you can add them to your best tree. Uh, but you might want to spend a little bit of time gaining some experience as well, that's entirely up to you. So we've got these interesting fellas here. Pigs with mage hats by the looks of it actually. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I just love the Japanese uh, role playing enemy design uh, in this game. It's so silly, so much fun. So they're not particularly challenging as you can see. I don't think we've fought any of these uh, special jellyfish type slimes yet have we? So. Yeah, just basically kill them at least once, as I say. And then you'll be, uh, you know, fine at that point. Some of these enemies that heal in this game, and there's quite a few of them, uh, you'll generally need to kill them within a single round. Ah, oh, 48 experience. Well, that's going up a little bit. How much are we getting from each battle? Right, so the first item to grab... Sparkly on the floor around here. I think I can see it. Uh, is that it? Yep. Yeah. And there's two more. I won't kill all the enemies for you now. I'll do that once I finish recording. Uh, if we head over here, I think there's a sparkly. Make sure I haven't missed that one. There it is. And there's one more up here. This would take us back to the Heliodor region. Remember those two exits on the map? Well, this is where this other exit would have taken us. Okay, and now we're going to head back the way we came. And the reason for that is we're going to be going closer towards the campsite, but also towards some more sparklies as well. Right, so just stay close to the northern section of the wall at this point. And then just past this cab, actually, up here. Should be another sparkly. Uh, okay, a little bit further out than I thought. But it is around here. Right, was that it? Yeah. So some of them can be quite hidden, as you can see. Okay, I'm going to keep going towards the campsite. But kind of like above the campsite. Uh, yes. Okay, in fact, we're going to go south of the campsite. Because there's one more sparkly we can grab before resting here. It's a harvest point. There's probably an official Dragon Quest name for these things. I'll just call them sparklies. For obvious reasons. <laughs> Let's head down here for another one. In fact, there's one on each side of this cove area. So we'll run to the other side of the pier. We'll get all these now. Saves getting them later then, doesn't it? Okay then, so I managed to level up uh, Eric, which means I should be able to just go ahead here and teach him the next ability I want to give him. Keep going to party talk. Go away. <laughs> I want to give him the next ability, which is a boost to his deafness. So if we go to character builder here, uh, head over to Eric, go down to Guile, 
and one of these. Uh, there we go, yes, deafness plus 10. It costs 8 skill points. So just to clarify, deafness improves the stealing rate for thieves. And we've already learned half inch, so obviously it's going to go well with that. And later on, I don't know if we can see it yet, yeah we can. Uh, for another 10 skill points, we can unlock deafness plus 30. So by that point, Eric, I think, will be really suffering in the offensive and defensive departments because we put all his skill points into stealing, but he should be stealing a lot more than uh, he otherwise would be. So I still might do that, you know. Haven't decided yet, but deafness plus 10 will hopefully be a big help. There's the next sparkly for us to grab. And there's a couple more sparklies over to the east, which I'm not going to worry about right this moment. There's one more I want to show you uh, for now before we go to camp. Uh, when we camp, we can do a little bit more forging since we've grabbed some new recipes and stuff, haven't we, by this point, since our first forge attempt previously. Another harvest point. Uh, I think there was a typo there with the buzzberries, wasn't there? I think it didn't have a space between the of and the buzzberries. Maybe I missed that. I wasn't really paying attention. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead... Uh, and camp here. At the campsite then I'm going to go to forge items and we can have a look at some of the new equipment that we can do. I don't know if there's much in the way of uh, new weapons. I'll just check. No. So that's fine but armour is what I'm interested in right now anyway. And we can see we can do a scale shield uh, which is pretty decent if you're using a one-hander. Uh, hats but we don't have the ingredients for that yet. Clothes Templar's uniform is a boost actually to both of these characters. Uh, or armour. Now the armour is what I'm going to be interested in I think. Uh, even though it will, re will mean removing the armour from Fuzz that boosts experience. I think I'm quite happy to do that at this point. Because we've gained a few levels and I'd rather start improving his stats now. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We're going to go and create the suit of scale armour. And hopefully we'll get a good version of this. Don't forget, it's a good idea to save before you do go ahead and craft. But don't forget, once you load your save game, you can't actually use the forge for five minutes. So it's a bit annoying, but there we go. Ah, brilliant. Already got one into the yellow. Oh, need to do that again. Hopefully we won't go past. Yay, another one in the yellow. Mm, can't miss doing that one again. Remember, if you get half or more in the yellow, so in this case three or more, then you'll craft the highest level possible of the item, which is a level 3. Okay. Oh, that was close. If we can just do one more. No. Oh, well. We should get a level 2 from that one, I think. So let's go ahead and finish. And I don't know if we'll have the ingredients to boost that up further afterwards. But we've got a plus two armour. Oh yeah, we did loot some perfectionist pearls, didn't we? So we could actually rework it, make it even more powerful. But I'm going to save those perfectionist pearls for now. We'll use them on something better later. Let's go ahead and equip that. Oh, Fuzz wasn't even using the plus experience either. I forgot we changed that out earlier on. Uh, right, scale armour, where are you? There you are. So from 33 to plus 41 defence. Not too shabby at all. Okay, and I think on that note, guys, we'll take a break. So thanks for bearing with me throughout this episode. It's gone on a little bit longer than I'm sure uh, many of you would have hoped. Uh, but hopefully it's been helpful to you and you'll come back and join me again soon for more Dragon Quest XI. I'm really enjoying this game, actually. So much fun. But, yeah, going to take a break. Goodbye.